Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to be talking about our ongoing work on MLIR dialect for graph class. So we have relational data all around us, and graphs are a convenient way to describe relational data. Graph analytics is a set of algorithms to, do, to, an, to analyze these relationships in graph data, and GNNs are one way to make predictions based on graph data. Both graph analytics and graph neural networks, they are difficult to write and parallelize, and this is because graphs are highly irregular. Um, and moreover, when you optimize on one platform, the optimizations are not necessarily portable across other platforms. So one way to tackle this is to approach this from sparse linear algebra. So graphs can be represented as sparse matrices. Suppose if I want to do a breadth-first search starting at node 4, I can do this by creating a vector, set the value at 4 to 1, and multiply this with the sparse matrix. Uh, the output will be the, another vector, which has the neighbors of 4 set to 1. So I can repeat this process and multiply this with sparse matrix again, and I can find the next, next set of neighbors. But there is one issue. If a, a node has, if a node is going to have multiple incoming neighbors, and if I just use the scalar multiply and scalar dot when I'm multiplying the rows and columns, I'm going to be ending up with a vector which has, which counts the, um, the in degree of the of the neighbors. And for BFS, this is an overkill. We just need a frontier which has the bit set to one, and we can explore the next set of vertices. So to do this, instead of using the scalar multiply or scalar add, we can use a logical AND and logical R. And if we do the same, same process, and we'll be computing the frontiers. Um, additionally, we can also apply transformations on the output. If I'm not interested in a certain, uh, certain node, I can create a mask and then use the, apply the mask on the output to keep only the ones that I'm interested in. So with sparse linear algebra and, and this mask, these transformations, we can do some interesting graph algorithms. So graph class, the, the graph, the BLAS here is the basic linear algebra subprogram. Um, it's a, it, it's a effort to standardize this linear algebra based approach to, to analyze graphs. So it's a community driven effort. It provides building blocks for writing graph algorithms uh, using sparse linear algebra over algebraic semirings. Algebraic semirings are just this concept from abstract algebra. And the, the easiest way to think about it is you are going to replace the scalar multiply with the binary operator and the, the add with the monoid operator. So in addition to semirings, the, uh, the graph class also has uh, descriptors. And the descriptors are used to alter the, uh, uh, you, can, you can specify things like I want to change, transpose the inputs, and I, I may want to merge or replace the output. So the table here shows the list of operations in graph class. And using these operations, you can do community deduction, centrality score calculations, and a lot of traversals. Uh, the graph class standard uh, defines the C API for these graph class ops. And suits sports graph class is one of the reference implementation for the C spec. So it has Python bindings. It's been integrated into Julia, MATLAB. There's a network X effort. And it's also been used in Falker DB, which is a graph database engine. So why, why do we need a compiler for graph class? So let's, let's think about this. Consider implementing the sparse matrix matrix product uh, for graph class in C. And if we consider four different storage formats for the sparse matrix, we have four matrices here, two input matrices A and B, a mask, and an output. That's already 256 different variants that I need to write. There are 11 built-in types and over 960 built-in semirings and the 32 different ways that descriptors can change the, the uh, semantics of this uh, sparse gem. So we have a common tool explosion here. In addition to this, there are also combinations of operators that we can fuse. So if, if we put, put all these together, this is something that, that, that looks like a similar problem that the uh, MLIR is, can tackle very well. So we started working on the graph plus styling. So we assume a workflow where uh, the graph algorithm can be expressed in Python or through graph SQL, and we are able to build an MLIR representation from it. And graph algorithms are usually iterative in nature. So it needs to be in a combination of described com combination of structured control flow and uh, the graph plus styling. So we then progressively lower the graph plus ops to linear generic ops, and using the sparse tensors, semi ring operators as payload. There are three semi ring operators in sparse tensors. So sparse tensor unary, binary, and, and reduce. And then we use the sparse tensor, uh, sparse compilers pipeline um, to target different architectures. Uh, th this is what a graph plus op looks like in graph plus dialect. So a GRB is the namespace, VXM is the op. Both semi-ring and descriptors are attributes. 
uh, VXM multiplies uh, Schwarz tensor U with the Schwarz matrix A, and then you can also apply an optional mask on it. So this is an example of our lowering. Here the operator is uh, graph plus assign, and the semantics of the assign is to assign uh, the, a scalar value to a Schwarz tensor, and it must also apply a right mask. The descriptor here, here says that you must use the complement of the mask. So we lower this to a, a linear generic op with the mask as its input and a Schwarz tensor unary as the payload. So the, 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 the Schwarz tensor unary executes the present region when the mask is non-zero and it executes the absent region when it's, a, when it's zero. So for this complement case, we return the scalar from the Schwarz tensor's absent region. Here are a couple of opportunities for uh, fusing graph class ops. So this is a data flow graph that, that you will see in, in breadth for search. So you have, you, have, you have all these graph class operations executing in a loop. And the, the assign produces a sparse tensor, which is then used as a mask in VXM. And VXM produces a, um, a sparse tensor, which is used by reduce. And it's also used by assign in the next successive attrition. So if you look at this pattern, we can, uh, we can fuse the VXM and reduce together and compute the reduction as, for, as, we, as when we compute VXM. And if it, if, it, if it was an MXM followed by a reduce, and if, red, if reduce is the only consumer of the MXM, we do not even need to allocate the output, output matrix for the MXM. So current state, so we have a subset of operations for supported in graph class, um, the graph class dialect. We pro progressively lower the graph class ops to um, lean algorithm sparse tensors. Our lowering focuses on the, all the different variants due to graph classes, semi rings, mask, complement, and, and sparse tensor deals with the different storage formats. So we also adapted the, the sparse compilation pipeline to lower it to OpenMP with LLVM. Putting all these together, we have end-to-end -end code generation for bit for search that runs on a Xeon, Xeon CPUs with OpenMP. So learning, so one interesting observation was uh, how we tackle this combinatorial explosion. So we, we started uh, the, at the top level, we were focusing only on the, on the, on the graph plus specific variants and focusing on the algorithm, mask, mask complements, and, and we pushed the, the rest of the, the, the combinatorial um, to sparse tensor. So we are basically distributing this explosion across different dialects. And I, th I thought it was, even, it was pretty cool when it, it all came together. Um, and often I found myself like writing a complex sequence of uh, um, Schwarz tensor summering sem inside a Linux generic payload, so it was useful to have like a design part, a builder pattern. So future directions, I, we wanted to support all the operations in the graph plus uh, spec, and um, really interested in trying out the, the transform dialect and doing some of these uh, operator fusions, and also use the sparse compilations pipeline for vectorization and GPU code generation. Um, thank you.